We're losing our natural biodiversity at an unprecedented rate. We're threatening the natural infrastructure that we rely on to survive. We know from work done at Kew that one in five plants are at risk of extinction. So the work that we're doing is to try and understand what the threats are, where they are, and how we can prioritise which conservation actions are needed to conserve those species. My name is Serene Hargreaves. I'm the Species Assessment Coordinator of the new Plant Assessment Unit at Kew. We take information from a wide range of resources, so we speak to experts, we take information collected over hundreds of years, we look in the libraries, we bring all that information together into one place and use a strict set of criteria from the IUCN Red List to categorise it according to its risk of extinction. I'm Ime Niklua and I'm a research scientist here at the Royal Botanic Gardens Kew. Depending on what project we're working on, we'll have a list of species that we're interested in evaluating their status. And then we gather as widely as possible distribution information about them. And often we start right here in the herbarium, because each herbarium specimen represents a unique record of a particular plant occurring at a particular point in space and time. And then we go to the literature, we see if anything is published in the scientific literature about the plant, and then we go further and we look at the context the plant is growing in, what's happening in that area and so on. So I'm Justin Motes, um, I'm a research leader uh, in spatial analysis and I deal with where plants are, why they're there, how they've got there and the, the spatial element of plants. In the past, plants were recorded uh, very poorly on the ground, so people would describe this plant was collected two kilometres northeast of a town or something like that. Whereas obviously nowadays we have satellite navigation, GPS and mobile phones, so we can actually record localities down to a few metres, which means we know exactly where it was and what's happening in that area at that time. But also with the increase in technology, with the increase of the internet, we can actually start gathering information from lots of different areas. We can bring in satellite imagery, we can bring in citizen science information from users around the world who may have recorded or photographed that plant, or even just that area. So we can actually look at the area where the plant occurs, look at a photograph that's recently there and see whether there's been forest fires in the area, or deforestation, or various changes on the ground. We put together a whole package of all the information we can about that particular plant and all of that analysis and review uh, precedes us making a statement um, about what we think the extinction risk is to that particular plant. And the system that we use most often for making those extinction risk assessments is the IUCN Red List. I think that the IUCN Red List is so important because what it does is it provides governments and organisations a tool to measure what the current status of biodiversity is. The system provides us with a language we can use across the board and also a central point where all the assessments of species, not just of plants but also of mammals, birds, insects even, they're all put together in one database so the public can see all that information. There are many species that haven't been assessed. Things like coffees, really economically important species, um, Mercias, ecosystem important species from Brazil. So we're going to be bringing together information that hasn't been brought together in this way before and publishing it, getting it up onto the IUCN Red List, looking at the extinction risk of those species. What that will allow us to do is to prioritise all the conservation actions around those species that hasn't been done before. Toyota has very generously agreed to provide funding to help IUCN accelerate the rate at which it's putting assessments of extinction risk for species onto the red list. Part of the funding will feed through to Kew and enable us to streamline our processes and accelerate the rate at which we are creating extinction risk assessments for plant species.